Welcome back to Open Line tonight. We are talking about the new HBO Max docu-series. It's called The Way Down, God, Greed, and the Cult of Gwen Shamblin. New Channel 5, <coughs> excuse me, investigates Phil Williams is joining us tonight. You started reporting on Gwen Shamblin uh, back in the early 2000s. Right. This is all recently back in the news and really the entertainment sphere because of this docu-series. We also, I should say, um, I'm gonna put Lindsay back on the line here. Lindsay, are you with us again? I am. Good. Thank you for sticking around. We appreciate that. Lindsay called in and, and um, told us she is a former member of Remnant Fellowship, and we appreciate you having this conversation with us. Uh, and I understand that you you helped fact check this docu series. I did. Um, so <laughs> I was asked a lot of questions about um, some of the situations and uh, dynamics that were going on in Remnant Fellowship. Um, for the docu series, so I did an interview with one of the producers. We talked to. She gave me a long laundry list of experiences, and I was able to tell some of my own stories and add some of my own facts to it. Um, and really, there, there was a whole team of people um, who were not so didn't feel safe speaking out, but who felt safe uh, telling the producers. You know, all these stories that these people are telling you are true. I was either there for them or I witnessed things like them. Um, so I'm very proud to say that the documentary does have a very accurate portrayal of what we all went through. And, and I'm curious, Lindsay, because you know there, there's always this tension of, you know, is it fair to call a church a cult? Uh, because again, as I mentioned earlier, one person's church is another person's cult. What what made Remnant Fellowship different it, from your experience? Uh, so I I love this question because. I did not grow up, I, the only church I ever knew was Remnant Fellowship until late high school. I think the first non-Remnant Fellowship church I went to was um, in Cortland, New York. It was Grace Fellowship Church, just kind of a regular big Christian church, lots of good people going there to sing songs and talk about scripture. And to me, it felt so informal and almost comical. And I thought, why other people take their religion exactly this seriously? And to my, to me, a person who thought I was devout for my whole life, um, it seemed almost like um, Christianity light. And then I realized over time and from talking to other people, from everybody from friends in college who were devout Jews or people who were in Eastern religions, and I realized how much more severe um, our, the religion I grew up with was. And that's how I kind of realized it was a cult because no other church or religious organization enforces their rules in the way that Remnant Fellowship does. Um, Remnant Fellowship is in charge of people's finances, of where they get jobs, um, how old they are when they're in a relationship, when they get into relationships. They don't have arranged marriages per se, but there are definitely marriages that are aggressively and abusively encouraged. Um, it's, it's actually a worry of me. My youngest sister, or second youngest sister, just turned 18, and I have no idea um, if they're going to match her up with somebody and who she may not have anything in common with, I don't really know how that's going to go. Because um, you don't have contact with your family anymore, right? Correct. As part um, of the I'm only able to really church. hear through the great sign exactly how they're doing and what's going on. Um, I actually was in contact with my mother up until a few months ago. Um, I started posting on a forum uh, called um, it's called the Free Ginger Forum, and the remnant leadership had found some of my posts, which were anonymous, decided they were must have been written by me. And so my mom texted me while I was at work and said, uh, leadership wants to know if these are your, face, your posts online. Um, and I said, well, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's cyber stalking because this is an anonymous private forum for discussions of all sorts of things. But they actually have a team of people in the church who go around scouring the internet for information against them so they can have it deleted. Um, right before the documentary came out, Remnant Fellowship actually deleted their Wikipedia page, um, and I've had numerous Twitter accounts and email addresses reported, blocked, and disabled because Remnant members and mass will go and report these accounts. Um, there actually was a blog probably about eight years ago that was a long, long someone's survival story on a WordPress website, and uh, I went to go access it a couple years ago, and it had just been replaced with one page that just said, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And that was it. Um, so you know you're in a cult when all of the information is controlled that heavily. Um, 
they're not open to discussing what they do there. They're not open to discussing whether or not it's legitimate. They have decided who they are, what they stand for, and they will not budge, and they're very proud of that. Lindsay, what is it about this small, petite woman with big hair that gives her control over so many people? What is it about her? You know, it's so funny because after I grew up hearing her drawl and seeing her hair, I don't even consider her hair big. I, it, just, it just looks like her. She's just a person I knew um, my whole life. So um, I don't think it was until I started watching RuPaul's Drag Race that I realized exactly how big her hair was. Um, but she, the thing is that the cult will prey upon people with any insecurity. It started with people who wanted to lose weight. And as we know, in America, people will do almost anything to lose weight. They will sacrifice their internal organs. They will exercise. They will stop eating altogether. It's, it's a horrible of things that people are willing to do. Um, just to feel a little bit lighter, even if they don't lose any weight, they just want to feel better and look better. And it, it, there's a lot of pressure there. Um, but Gwen Shamblin said, I can cure your addiction to anything, to cigarettes, to porn, to anything you can think of. And there were enough people who, because no matter what, it, there's always somebody who has an easy addiction story who can say, yeah, I smoked cigarettes for a few years and I quit. And that was it. And if you can be Gwen Shamblin and market that person and say, it was easy for this person, and if it's not easy for you, you are sinning, she can make millions and millions of dollars after every person who didn't do it as easy as that person. Fascinating. Yeah, I'm curious, and, and you touched on this a, a little bit, but can you describe a little bit, bit more about this pressure that they were able to exert uh, on people to keep them in line, uh, you know, what, what kind, of, how, how did that pressure manifest itself? Sure. And one of the things the documentary didn't really touch on was there, there is a hierarchy. Um, Gwen Shamblin is at the top, of course, but right beneath her was Ted Anger and a few of the other early on leaders. Um, they have regional representatives, they have local representatives, they probably, I would guess, have neighborhood representatives by now. Um, every single person at the moment they enter the program has a person above them who they report to. Um, and it goes beyond simply, I'm keeping a food diary and I'm sending it to my sponsor, or I'm, it's, it's not like AA, it's not like any other recovery organization. You have to tell them every single thing about your day. You have to tell them if you prayed, if you ate, if you thought about eating, if you felt guilty about anything. I mean, they micromanage all of your feelings at day one. Um, and they start assigning blame and different kinds of guilt to all of those different feelings to the point where you have decided you, you have to figure out there's exactly one way to live your life. Um, I actually, I grew up with people saying, it, it's a common thing, it's nobody's perfect. Gwen Shamblin took that personally. Um, if you said nobody's perfect in Remnant Fellowship, you would get a really good look from a parent or a camp counselor or anybody else who is a personal authority. You are required to be perfect. If you're not perfect, you're purposefully not being that way. And that is not what Jesus died on the cross for. Wow. We have to take another quick break. We're going to come right back. And please, if you have any questions, feel free to call in 615-737-PLUS. Stay with us.